Hi, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic are the top five questions answered about stem cell therapy. Now, regenerative medicine is a new field, so naturally there's going to be a lot of questions that people have. The treatments offer the ability to actually repair and regenerate tissue damage. Now, we know that plastic surgery used to be 90% surgical, but now it's 90% non-invasive with all the fillers and the Botox and other things. Now, orthopedic conditions are headed in the same direction as more and more of these regenerative treatments uh, proliferate throughout the uh, United States, this is what we're going to see. Now, regenerative medicine offers repair and relief. So it's not just a proverbial Band-Aid like a lot of the pain treatments that we have today. So it allows people to get back to playing with their grandkids, participating at elite sports levels, all these types of things that offer long-term relief. Now, we get a ton of questions on regenerative therapy. It's a new field. There's naturally going to be a lot of questions. These include questions about effectiveness, the FDA regulations, insurance coverage, and more. So here's the top five questions that we receive either on our Facebook page or YouTube or email to us. I mean, we get like over 100,000 visitors on our web presence every month. So here we go. Question number one, are the treatments FDA approved? Well, for the amniotic-derived treatments, they cannot be FDA-approved or denied because they're regulated as a biologic. So this is similar to how other allograft tissue is regulated. So it's FDA-regulated. It needs to be processed according to current good tissue practice standards, um, and then it falls under 361 with human tissue uh, regulations. Now, when it comes to bone marrow, PRP, and adipose collection kits, these are typically FDA-cleared through the 510K process. So those are FDA cleared, but you know, they use your own um, bone marrow and your own adipose, okay? Now, how does the FDA view stem cell therapy products? Well, they like what's called minimal manipulation in the United States, that's okay. It's a same setting procedure. You're not allowed to culture um, any of the products, such as your bone marrow, adipose, or the amniotic, uh, to expand the cell counts. That turns it into what they call a drug. And there's certain enzymes and additives that are not allowed to change, be added because they can change the biological structure of the material. Now, maximal manipulation is what is not okay in the United States. It turns the biologic into the definition of a drug, and it involves culturing or adding certain things to the material. It's performed internationally now in countries like Mexico, Cayman Islands, Caribbean, Panama, where those regulations don't exist. It's not necessarily a bad thing you know, to have uh, those procedures in other countries. It's just that the FDA is fairly strict. Question number two, are the treatments covered by insurance? The answer predominantly over 95% of the time is no. At times the physician visits or the imaging studies will be covered, just like any other physician visit. The only time the regenerative materials are covered is when they're used as part of a surgical procedure. So, for instance, if you have a spinal fusion and the stem cell material is used to help augment the fusion, then it can be billed. If you do a tendon repair and the stem cell materials help to augment the repair, it can be billed. You know, those types of situations. Now, there are also some codes for ophthalmologic procedures because the, the stem cell material, such as amniotic, is very effective for preventing scar tissue when you have a chemical burn. Uh, so there are codes for that. And there's also codes for diabetic ulcer wounds uh, as well. Third question is how much does it cost? Okay, now it depends on a few things, so it's very difficult to give just a specific number to somebody before they're even seen by the center. For one thing, there are geographical considerations. Things are going to cost different in New York City than they do in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and it may be the opposite of what you think. New York City may have so much competition in the area where the person goes that they may be a little bit cheaper than Springfield, Missouri. I just picked something. Don't, please don't get offended if you're from Springfield, but it may just be there's no competition in Springfield, Missouri. Also, the extent of the patient condition. Is it one knee? Is it a shoulder? Is it a hip? Is it two joints? Um, how bad is the arthritis or the condition being treated? You know, what are we dealing with? That's the, the question. And then what's included? Some, some offices will include several office visits uh, post-procedure for nothing. Some will include PRP along with the stem cell. Um, you know, it just, it just depends. Some, some do a laser therapy um, as well. So now here's some ranges. So for PRP therapy, which is not a stem cell procedure, but it's platelet-rich plasma, it's going to range anywhere from $500 to about $1,300. Okay. Now stem cell therapy 
uh, you have a broad range of what's being offered. Most of our facilities offer amniotic stem cell therapy. Um, and just a little plug, there's various videos that I've done on amniotic stem cell therapy. Please feel free to watch those. But the procedure is going to cost anywhere from 2500 up to like 10000 And that may be if you have like an adipose SVF procedure um, where, you know, there's multiple body parts being treated. Or if it's under an IRB protocol where you go IV, then it could be about $10,000. All right, but otherwise, for one joint, it's going to be on the lower end. There are financing options available, like Med Loan Finance or Loan Hero. Um, we have those available. Fourth question is, how are the products obtained? Are babies harmed in the process? Well, when you look at amniotic, it's obtained from consenting mothers after a scheduled C-section. So the baby's fine. There's no ethical concerns. There's no embryonic stem cells involved. Okay, uh, now when you look at bone marrow, adipose, or PRP, bone marrow comes obviously from your bone marrow, adipose from your fat, and PRP from your own blood. It's autologous, meaning it's your own tissue. So these are adult uh, stem cell procedures, so there's no embryonic cells. And these are same setting procedures, so risk factors are very low. Now looking at amniotic fluid in particular, um, they have a lot of components that are rich for tissue regeneration. Um, including growth factors, there's over 75 growth factors. Cytokines, which can help, which can help modulate inflammation. So if you have a rheumatoid uh, or psori psoriatic arthritis or something like that, it can help modulate that to mitigate pain. Different types of collagen, hyaluronic acid, messenger RNA. There's some exosomes, secreto secretomes, and then cellular components include mesenchymal stem cells. If it's processed the right way, and the lab we work with processes it amazingly well so that you do have viable stem cells, uh, fibroblasts, keratinocytes, and epithelial cells as well. Question number five, is it indicated for, you know, insert your condition here? We get that condition, that, that question a lot. Now, it's very commonly used for arthritis, uh, sports injuries, overuse injuries, cartilage defects, wound healing. It's also being offered for RSD, diabetes, COPD, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autism, Occipital neuralgia, erectile dysfunction, incontinence, some other female issues, macular degeneration, and kidney failure. You know, we are not going to sit here and say that it's an on-label um, procedure for all these conditions because it's not, all right? There's not even a label for amniotic because it's regulated as a biologic and not a drug, okay? Which means that a physician can use it for conditions where they deem it safe and effective, but if anybody tells you, oh, I can cure your diabetes, or I can cure this or that, it doesn't work that way. Amniotic tissue has unique properties that reduce scar tissue formation, reduce inflammation, and support soft tissue regeneration. The potential medical uses of the tissue inside and outside of the body are broad. This tissue can be utilized in procedures where reduction in scar tissue or regeneration of a soft tissue is beneficial. That's the party line nomenclature. Now, where a physician deems the product to be safe and have benefit is acceptable under the FDA regulations of 361 of human cell tissue products. At R3, we truly want to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired. Our centers of excellence are located nationwide, and we offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us today at r3stemcell.com or simply call us at 844-GET-STEM. Thank you for watching.